Shabbat Shalom. About 1900 years ago, in the days of the Roman Empire, there lived in the land of Israel a rabbi named Shimon Bar Yochai. One sunny Friday afternoon, as Rabbi Shimon was strolling through the market with his students, the subject of politics came up. I love the Roman Empire, said his friend, Rabbi Yehuda. Look at these magnificent paved roads and this beautiful marketplace and the amazing technology of their bridges and their aqueducts. Rabbi Shimon was shocked. How can you say such things? The Roman Empire destroyed our beloved temple. And anyway, they only built roads and bridges to make it easier to collect taxes. I hate the Roman Empire. Well, as fate would have it, one of the students was a spy for the Roman Empire. Before the sun had set, word was out that Bar Yochai was to be arrested for treason. His students ran to him crying, you must hide Rabbi Shimon. It isn't safe for you to be in public. So Shimon Bar Yochai made a daring escape to a well-hidden cave far away from the nearest village. Now, as it so happens, Rabbi Shimon didn't really mind hiding in the cave. At last, he said to himself, I, uh, I finally have time to catch up on my reading. He spent his days studying Torah and his nights in meditation and prayer. And God was pleased with Rabbi Shimon's devotion. And right outside the entrance to the cave, God placed a carob tree. Now, I know that you may not love the idea of having nothing to eat but carob, but for Rabbi Shimon, it tasted like manna from heaven. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months, Rabbi Shimon's studies became ever more intense. From morning to night, Shimon Bar Yochai studied the words of the Torah. After one year, he knew every word by heart. After two years, he could recite the Torah backwards. After three years, he could recite the Torah backwards while standing on his head to the tune of any song you could name. After six years, he knew the white spaces between the letters as well as he knew the letters of the Torah itself. After 12 years in the cave, studying the Torah from morning until night, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai came to understand the mystical secrets of the Torah that had never been revealed to Moses. He was so bursting with the light of Torah that the pupils of his eyes were filled with flames of holiness. And after the sunset, he could read in the dark. All night long, all night long, he would ascend to the heavens where he would dance with Miriam at the shores of the Red Sea. And then one Friday afternoon, Elijah the prophet himself came to visit and said, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the time has come. It is safe for you to leave the cave and to return to your students. Elijah took Rabbi Shimon by the elbow and led him to a beautiful meadow where Jewish people were singing and laughing and playing together. But Rabbi Shimon was suddenly filled with a terrible anger. His eyes burned as he saw men gathering flowers and children playing games and women baking cookies. What is this? He cried out and all the people fell silent. For 12 years, I have been stuck in a cave, studying Torah day and night, and all of you who are free to do whatever you choose. This is how you waste your time, collecting flowers, playing games, baking cookies. And as soon as he said these words, flames shot out of his eyes like laser beams setting the whole meadow on fire. Everyone screamed and went running. But Elijah the prophet calmly took Rabbi Shimon by the arm once again, turned him around and said, my friend, I 
don't think you're ready to leave that cave yet. And so Shimon Bar Yochai returned to the cave, but still his anger didn't go away. So not knowing what else to do, he started to write. He wrote about all the great mystical secrets of the Torah that had been revealed to him over the past 12 years. It took him a full year to write down everything that he had learned. But when he reached the final word of the book, he suddenly felt a great weight lifted off of his shoulders. He knew he was ready to leave the cave. He stepped out into the sunlight. It was once again a Friday afternoon and he returned to the same meadow where he again saw men gathering flowers and children playing games and women baking cookies. He started to feel the anger rise in himself again, but this time he steadied himself and walked forward and asked, for, for what purpose are you gathering these flowers when you could be studying Torah? He asked. Oh, one man said, my friend is pretty sick, and so I'm bringing these rare flowers to cheer her up this Shabbat. I don't know a lot about Torah, but I do know something about flowers. And one teenager chimed in, I'm looking after my little sisters so they won't bother my mom while she's cooking Shabbat dinner. We're playing a, a game to learn the letters of the Aleph Bet, Nun, Gimel, Hey, and uh, a, a, another letter. Um, we are very good students, you know. And why, asked Rabbi Shimon to one woman, are you baking these cookies? Oh, they're for my grandmother, she answered. This is her special recipe. And now that she's too old to make them for herself, I bring them to her every Shabbat. She was an outstanding baker. And now I'm not bad myself. Then we sit together and I read her verses from the week's Torah portion. But you know, said the teenager, studying Torah isn't the only way to do God's work. All of us are helping to make God special day Shabbat a special day with the gifts God gave us. What gift do you have? Well, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai thought and said, well, I, I really do love studying Torah. I wrote a whole book about it, actually. <laughs> and that night, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was invited for a Shabbat dinner that couldn't be beat. And he spent the whole evening teaching about the mystical lessons of the Torah and he ate way too many cookies. And if you wish, you can read Rabbi Shimon's book of mystical teachings even today. It's called the Zohar. But I can tell you right now what you'll learn if you do, that each of us is unique with our own special gifts and every pure soul is precious to God. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>